Hello and welcome everybody to 1974. Now in 1974, the whole world is going crazy. Gerald Ford takes office. Richard Nixon had resigned as president of the United States. Inflation was like at 11 point some odd percent, pushing 12% inflation. We can relate in 2022. And in the world of golf, Hale Irwin wins the U.S. Open. Gary Player won the Masters that year. But Hale Irwin is somebody who I feel like is forgotten. Hale Irwin was like a great golfer, not just kind of a mediocre, yeah, pretty good, great golfer. Uh, I think on the Champions Tour, he still like has the most wins ever. But, you know, 1974, his first U.S. Open. Out of, get this, three U.S. Opens. See about how hard it is to win the U.S. Open. And just to go, oh, and just cash. Oh, I'm just going to win three of those. <laughs> it's so, such a good golfer. Look into Hale Irwin, amazing golfer. All right, but we're talking about Lynx came out with the CR. Uh, somebody referred to it once as the Lynx 2, but either way, the CR irons in 1974. Let's get this on the review table and have a closer look. Pretty easy to identify. There are not many markings here. There's the iron number on the sole. There's the Lynx little kitty cat. And then there's links here on the top line, which seems a little bit more polished. This little concave portion of the blade seems like it's sandblasted. Spinning around here. You can see the toe profile. Very blade-like. This is very no-nonsense grooves. Obviously, this is a cast stainless steel iron. Spinning around, you can see the heel profile right here, a little bit of offset there. On the hosel, we have USA. Is that showing up? It does say USA right there. There's a little brass ferrule, and we have a shaft over hosel design here. That looks like brass, is that brass? Either way, some of these I've also seen with CR stamped right here instead of USA, but these are the ones that I see most often. We move up the stepped shaft. We have Lynx Custom Manufacturers. Still to this day are looking to customize your fit, which is good. We have a Lynx branded shaft right here. Trying to read this through the viewfinder, having difficulty. Uh, I think there's flex on here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Regular flex. 1974. And then we have this grip. Not really sure what we're looking at here. This Seems like it's not, this is an Avon grip. Seems unlikely this is the original grip. There we go, a beautiful cast iron, kind of slightly flanged blade iron here. Let's get this out on the range and see how we do. I really like these irons. Made in the USA, Lynx. They have a nice wide flanged sole, which I would call a modern sole. Maybe it's not radius, you know, it doesn't have that forgiving leading edge, but it's, it's really good for a stainless steel bladed style iron. I would play these, absolutely. Now, it's interesting to see how stainless steel irons have evolved. I was just looking at some of my 1941 Tommy Armour Silver Scots McGregor irons. They're stainless steel as well. And they don't have that wide sole. You know, the top line, they kind of muscled it up a little bit, but I like this thinner profile. I really like how Lynx got this club right. There are some interesting things. This brass little kind of ferrule in between the shaft. It's, you know, shaft over hosel design. And so it's just interesting. I like this club because it is interesting and they have that it, in it kind of, you could say it acts as a weight. So to me, this is a really good iron. It loses 
to like forged irons in sound. Yeah, it's a little more clacky than a forged iron. It's not as chromey and shiny, but it makes up for it in longevity. Like, look at this thing. It's beautiful. It's stainless. This thing isn't going to, you know, bust out some polishing compound and polish this up if you want. But this is a sandblasted finish with a polished top line. So you'd only polish that one little bit up if you wanted. I don't know why you would. But I mean, I have no complaints. From a gameable standpoint, I'd be happy to play these. They're interesting. They're interesting discussion. This is one of Link's first irons. And this is, to me, before they got weird with like cavity backs and stuff. To me, this is the pure, clean Lynx design, which I really like. So for me, yes, mid-70s, I would play these. Now, collectability, it's not the first Lynx irons. I don't know how collectible these are. You can probably find these for pretty cheap. They're stainless, so not much prestige there. So a really good iron, an interesting point in history. You think about 1974. I mean, TaylorMade was coming out with stainless steel blades in the 80s. So these, I feel like, were very era appropriate and something that a lot of people would game, especially with the world circumstances and inflation as high as it is. Sometimes you just weren't going to go out and buy the most expensive set of golf clubs. So a lot of real people you know, just average amateur golfers who go out, weekend warriors, are going to buy stuff like this. And that's something that's worth capturing and worth remembering. So let me know your thoughts about the Lynx CR or Lynx 2 irons in the comments below. I'm interested to hear your thoughts, memories, and what you think of this as a playable iron and a collectible. As usual, huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for your support. I accept general support on Patreon, where I post a few behind the scenes updates a few times a month. You can also support this channel by visiting my Amazon shop. I have a link in the description below. I am an Amazon associate. I make proceeds from qualifying purchases. Thank you so much for watching. I am the Vintage Golfer.